said to Max the other day, you know what you need in this very cold weather? And he said, yeah, a trip to like Hawaii or something? I went, no, some comfort food. We're gonna make Thai chicken curry. And he went, okay, that'll do. The reason, Max said, oh, I don't know, like a vacation in Hawaii is because he just came back from what we refer to as the old country, Canada, but specifically Edmonton, where he was in, wait, what was it? Minus 27, I think. Minus 27. But what's impressive is the people that live in those cold weather climates, they still exist outdoors like Max's father-in-law cooking salmon on his green egg. Shout out to my father-in-law and brother-in-law for getting out there in that weather and still making something as amazing as that. It was so damn good. Kiss ass. I love my father-in-law, he's so great. So I used to make this uh, recipe way back and I would buy a deli roasted chicken from the supermarket. I think they're just one of those genius things. Already done, bring it home, pull it apart, you've got great chicken for everything. And by the way, if you do that, be sure to save all the bones in the carcass for making stock or broth, because that's really the way to go. But now I've matured a little bit. And if you take a look at Sam the Cooking Guy, Recipes with Intentional Leftovers, my most recent book, the next book will come out in May, you can go to this chapter, how to cook a perfect roast chicken. Look how beautiful that is. And it's very simple. There's one, two, three, like four ingredients, maybe five that go into this. The key for me is a slow roasted chicken. It keeps it super moist and tender. It doesn't get that dark golden brownness on the outside, but for me, I really care about what's in it. So you can watch this, but you could also go get one of these and give it to somebody you love because we're almost a month away from uh, Valentine's Day. You gotta give something. We didn't give socks, a box of chocolates. Ooh, who gives, have you ever given a box of chocolates? I never have. I, never. Well, I don't think I've ever given a box of chocolates. One of those big plastic hearts with all the little heart candies inside come on you can do better than that ladies and gentlemen much better than that but we'll start by getting this chicken ready and then into the oven there it is i know a lot of people look at this my wife especially and goes "Ooh, gross disgusting i never want to see that again but it's uh called cooking we're going to deal with this in a second but first we'll get some garlic and lemon ready to cram inside the kid so the lemon will just cut into quarters I'm not bragging, but we're working on another knife, and this little five and a half inch Santoku looks like it might be the one. It's a real contender. I love the size of it. Show it off to this camera right here. Oh, coming this fall from Sam the Cooking Guy and friends, the five and a half inch Santoku knife with stupid face on the butt. So I'll just uh, throw out the little seeds are unnecessary. It's no big deal. And now the garlic, we're going to put it in. We're going to cut them in half like that to expose the cloves. This happens sometimes, they separate, no big deal. Okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. Next, the chicken. So I just had him drying on this. You're gonna want to dry the chicken really well with paper towels before you do anything. So I think the underside is okay, but now just do this. Under the armpits, you know, we've done this before. Remember the turkey at Thanksgiving we've done? All of this, all right, turn the guy over. The man or woman, I'd never know what they are. You called it a kid before, so geez, kid, they're all over the place. I don't know what they are. I guess they're, who knows? So right, so it's good. This little thing right here is not really necessary. I'm sure it's got some proper name. Yeah, it's called the Dinkus. My mother always called it the Pope's nose. I think that's something that, because it's, I don't know, a Pope that would have a nose that looked like that, it doesn't matter. Okay, so you Can got it good. Can disagree on Dinkus? It's a Dinkus, thank you. But you also want to dry the inside in here, like this, this, this. So paper towel in. Make sure that anything that was inside here, like the neck or the, the little bag of parts, is not there. So when you got this good, we're gonna put butter on the outside. You could absolutely use oil. Either one would be fine. And using my hand, because we know how much Max likes it when I do that, we'll start to spread the butter all over this guy, all around. It's not going to just help add some delicious flavor because we know butter's, it's like bacon, it makes everything good. Uh, but it's gonna be a good thing to help our seasoning stick when it gets to that part. So finish this up everywhere, do a good job, okay? Now we'll take our mixed salt and pepper, we'll do a nice amount all the way around. You can be fairly generous and complete to this side. We're gonna roast them breast side up, by the way. So if you end on this side, you'll be doing just fine. Sit right there, thanks buddy. Look at sitting there. Hmm, it's the thinker. And we always add some inside the cavity here. Last thing we'll do is we'll get a good 
a few pinches of the salt and pepper. Just drop them right down the, the big cavity hole here. I was gonna say gullet, but that is not the right term. And now our lemons go in like this. Take our garlic halves, cram them in. This is just gonna add flavor, perfume from the inside out. This garlic's all busted up. The rest of our lemons. I like to end with the lemons because it kind of keeps all that garlic in. And now breast side up. Now we're gonna tie the legs together. So now normally I would use kitchen twine for this, but I don't have kitchen twine, but I do have this wrapping ribbon that'll work just fine. It's gonna burn up. It's not gonna burn up. It's not gonna burn up. Why would it burn up? So it's not made for high temperatures maybe? Listen, bud. So here's all we do. This is what we want. We want to do this. We want to keep them from splaying apart. That's the whole goal of this. This just helps keep our little friend a little bit more organized. And we'll just do a couple loops here, there. We're good. Now this kid is going to be transferred right here to a baking sheet with a rack to keep it off the deck. I always say that, but you want the heat all the way around. Now I take the wing tips and I tuck them under. Cooperate with me. There you go. We're all set. If you look at it from the directly from the top, doesn't it look like He's kind of laying on the beach with his arms behind his head. <laughs> exactly. All right, here's the important parts. This will now go into a 300 degree oven for about three hours. Look, we'll get it depending on the size of your uh, chicken. This is about five pounds. So it might take a, just a little bit longer than that, but you want it to be 165 degrees in the breast when it's ready, but it's gonna be really delicious. I'll put this in the oven. I'll clean my disgusting hands. Then we'll get the vegetables and the curry and all that good part ready. So when the chicken's done, we just shred some off, put it in, and we eat. We eat big today. Here's what I hate about New Year's resolutions. They're hard to keep. And what's the biggest one of them all? Eating better, losing weight, feeling good about your body. That, ladies and gentlemen, has been made so much simpler with our good friends, HelloFresh. We like them because it's legit. The food that comes, the meals that come, not just delicious, not just nutritious, not just calorie conscious if you want them to be, not just vegetarian if you want them to be, but they're so simple to put together. They do the work so you don't have to and you can concentrate on other stuff, like your other resolutions. Most of the meals that we've shown you from HelloFresh have been meat or chicken or stuff like that, but I want you to know how fantastic their vegetarian lineup is. Take a look at this. One pot Mexicali black bean soup, and they're so cool, they give you the red pepper crema, the cheddar cheese, and the blue corn tortilla chips to go on top, but guess what? Looks aren't everything. Taste is everything, and this stuff, mm, insanely delicious. Tons and tons of flavor. And if it wasn't this that we're making, we could have also been making steak with sherry and shallot sauce. Or how about Italian chicken and pepper sandos? Come on, this stuff is what you should be eating when you're not making my food. So do this, go to hellofresh.com and use code STCG16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Surprise, look at what we're giving you. That's hellofresh.com and use my code STCG16 to get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. The chicken's cooking, but we'll get on with the rest of the Thai components. So a little oil in our pot and some diced yellow onion. And by the way, the recipe on the website for this is half of what I'm making. I just happen to be making a lot because everybody here is going to go crazy for it and we'll all take some home for dinner. Give this about three minutes to soften. And when it does, we add my newest obsession, sliced red holland peppers. Remember, flavor, not too much spice. These will get a minute or so. Some garlic. Nice. I think you knew that was coming. Give that a minute. Now the fun stuff. Two tablespoons of flour. Remember, I'm doubling this. Recipe below so you don't have to worry about writing anything down. And then four tablespoons of curry powder. Oh, what the hell, take my time doing that. Give this a mix. I know it looks rough, but it's about to get real good. Now, are we fans of a little heat? Boys, yes yeah, or no? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna say, if you are, you could put in some cayenne. I'll go like about a teaspoon, like that. And it goes quick mix and then the amazing magic ingredients coconut milk look how it comes sometimes all clumpy and gross two and i use unsweetened because i like to control the amount of sweet myself and we'll get to that so this will get mixed and the flour is going to mix with everything that's here and we'll start to make this thick rich and insanely delicious 
And just while it starts to get to the point where it wants to simmer a bit, we're gonna add our sweet part, which will be apricot jam. Looks like about a quarter cup to me, right? Nobody has to agree. Let's just take it for what it is. Oh, the smell, the smell that's coming out of this. I think this is the perfect example of don't eat the same thing all the time. This is going to be such a comforting, delicious feast for the senses. And if you're not used to using curry, you're in for a real treat. And when it comes to a general little simmer like this, just leave it alone. Stir it every couple of minutes, but over the next 10 or 15, it should thicken and be amazing. In the meantime, I'm gonna go get our chicken because he or she is ready. Say hello to my little friend. Oh, not so little. He's a five and a quarter pounds of freaking gorgeousness. What did I do? I put some butter, some salt, pepper, some lemon and garlic, and that was it. We were just saying this is a little bondage like right here, the hands tied behind the Well, Chansey was saying that. That would never occur to me or Max, would it, Max? You did stuff him. I did, st that's true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, but now you just, well, you just want to eat them. But look, here's the seat. When you tuck the wings under, everything's nice and neat. So you could take a little wing off if you wanted, like that, or here's the better move. Let's just get some breast off, okay? So I'm not gonna break the whole thing down. We did that uh, a couple, few weeks ago for the Korean fried chicken that was so good, but we'll just get some breast meat off. So here's breast bone here. If you just hang on this side of it, right? And you just cut, sort of follow the bone down. Oh, it's hot. Now, there's a school of thought that says, let stuff cool before you cut it, Sam. I just can't do that. And then you hold the chicken like this, and we're just coming under and come out. Do you see this juice? Do you see what's happening here? And do you know why that's happening? It's happening because we cooked it slow. We didn't race. Oh, man. And now the gardeners are jazzed about it. They're just coming right up on our grill. So the obvious thing to do is get yourself a bite. Okay, it's really hot, but it's, ah, 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 ah. Pardon me for a second. I have to swear. It's fucking perfect. Mm. It's so delicious. It's insane. But remember what the point was. The point was make the chicken ourselves so it can go in our Thai chicken curry. So let me just uh, get some of this off, shred up a few pieces, we'll put it in, and we're eating baked. Big, big, big. I really should let, let, I really should let this cool, but I honestly, I'm so excited I just can't. Ah, 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 this is nuts. I don't want to cut it. Cutting it is boring. Little chunks is boring. Ah, ah, ah. Big, beautiful pieces. Ah. Okay, two things before we build this. We absolutely want a little fresh lime to squeeze over the top, so we'll get that ready. And then a little fresh basil. Look, if you had Thai basil, that would be fantastic, but this is just regular. And here's how we cut it. That's that long uh, membrane down the middle. We don't want to give that to anybody. If you rolled it up this way and cut it, somebody might get that one piece and you don't want that. So we roll this up like a, like a cigar or a hand rolled cigarette or even a marijuana cigarette, which I can say because it's legal in most places, and then we take a little knife and then we cut super thin. Yeah, it is. All along the way we go. <laughs> marijuana cigarette. I think I was a bad boy. My parents bought me a book on the effects of marijuana once that they really wanted me to read. The smell of this is just insane. So this goes over here and here's this. See how it thickens beautifully? <sighs> here, who can smell that? It smells amazing. It's gotta start coming over there. Okay, now we take our chicken and the chicken goes in, because you want a lot. Don't be cheap. No cheap efforts here. Don't be an Allen. Uh-uh. Now that, look at these gorgeous pieces that somebody's gonna get. Get our rice. So, got a beautiful bowl, some fresh steamed rice in it. Now our chicken goes, oh gosh. Right on top like this. The onions, the Holland peppers. If you wanna just do a little extra sauce, you can do that. Beautiful. Just a little bit of the basil. It's gonna make the hugest difference in freshness and a little squeeze of the lime. That, ladies and gentlemen, is something you can write home about. Sorry, I don't know where that <laughs> came from. Who can say comfort food? Comfort food. Thank you, Chance. Comfort food. Thank you, Chance. Look, it's just, it's, I'm telling you, 
it is just so luscious. And I like it with these like really nice, significant pieces of chicken in here. Try and get a little bit of the Holland pepper. <gasps> oh, that bite, this bite. I know how this is gonna be. I've had this many times, but now you can too. Yum. It's the perfect bite. Perfect big bite, honestly. Of course you get the deliciousness of the curry. Then the cayenne, but right behind it. Just right, you know when somebody's at a light behind you and they're too close to your back bumper? Right behind your bumper is the apricot jam that just brings everything down to a gorgeous level. I want you to make this. And just so you know how dumb I am, my book, Sam so McCoon Guy Recipes with Intentional Leftovers. Yes, of course the chicken recipe is here that we just did for you. I forgot. So is this, the Thai chicken curry. Oh, oh, be still my heart. This book is useful even to me. And I wrote it. And I'm an idiot. Okay, that's it. Just don't eat the same thing all the time, please. Why would you do that? It's fucking perfect, man. Oh yeah, like that guy. Yep. Like that guy in, uh, in China, yeah. Or was that China or Japan? I think it was Japan. Oh, it was Osaka, yeah. That wasn't there for us. Yeah. You know, there's that war there's a woman in Thailand in Bangkok that cooks this crab omelet. Yeah. That ends up like the size of our burritos. Really? But it's just egg and a shit ton of crab in it. Oh, it's like yeah. the most legit thing you've ever seen. And she does it, she wears goggles, like ski goggles, and she does it at a huge walk. 